in the previous uh, segment we understood what exactly happens in the cell cycle that means during interphase and m phase and all the changes which take place in gap 1 s gap 2 and then m phase m phase we have to discuss in detail later on so in G1, it prepares itself for S. In G2, the cell prepares itself for the M phase. Now, in this segment, we'll talk about two important things. As we said in the beginning, if the cell is not going to divide after this division, that means these two daughter cells are not going to divide. So what is going to happen? And second thing which we could be discussing about, the DNA content and the chromosome number. Now, let us talk about the first thing. Suppose these two daughter cells which are formed here, after this, they are not going to divide. That means they will get differentiated or specialized to perform a specific job. So what exactly happens to these two cells? They enter into interface because these are smaller than the parent cell. They have to grow in size to the normal size of a cell. So they enter into G1, they grow to their normal size and then they get into a stage or a phase which is known as G0 or G0 stage. There are two, three ways in which this G0 or G0 is explained. We will draw both and the most appropriate one we'll uh, continue with and the other one we'll erase. One method is we draw a phase here and label it as G0 or G0. So if this is written as G0 or G0 phase, what exactly is meant by this? It means that these two daughter cells, they come into interface. That is the G1 part. Here they grow, uh, enlarge in size, come to their normal size and then they get into a phase where they are not going to divide. So G0 is written as actually inactive. But here inactive word is in reference to only division. So we call it inactive or quiescent stage where inactive for division. This we have to remember. The cell is going to perform all its activities which it has to but except for this division and that is why the word inactive is used. But we should not get confused that inactive means the cell is not going to do anything. It is going to perform all activities. This is one method in which we represent that these two cells come into quiescent phase or inactive phase where it's not going to divide anymore. The other method which is shown or which is used to represent this G0 is instead of drawing G0 here, we draw an arrow like this. So let us erase this part and this is written as G0. So again, what is indicated by this expression is that these two cells enter into G1 they grow to the size, they spend some time in this phase and then they come out of the cycle. This is a more appropriate expression because if you keep that G0 here, it might create a confusion. What kind of a confusion am I talking about? The confusion is going to be that these two cells come into G1, they grow to the normal size, get into G0 if we draw that G0 here. And again get into G1, again S, again G2. So if you're drawing that G0 here, people might get confused that after G0, it is going to again enter into G1. But if we draw it like this, that means it has come out of the cycle. It is not going to divide anymore. And this process that is coming out of the cycle, this process is known as differentiation. So I'm going to erase this label from here and write it here. These are two daughter cells which were deployed. I'm talking about this process. The cell coming out of the cell cycle and becoming specialized is known as differentiation. 
So cell now gets differentiated. It becomes specialized to perform a function. Most of the cells, they once get differentiated, come into G0 or G0, do not come back into the cycle. But there are exceptions. For example, parenchyma. If you are able to recall the secondary growth in a digot cell. I'm going to draw a short diagram so that you are able to remind, uh, you are reminded of it. This is the epidermis. Here are the cortical cells which are made up of parenchyma. And this is just a rough sketch so that we are able to recall what uh, we want to uh, understand here. So in case of secondary growth in digot stem, some parenchymatous cells, these cells, they become meristematic to make quark cambium. And which cells have resulted in the formation of quark cambium or parenchymatous cells? So when meristematic cells divided, we'll take this example. Suppose these two cells which are formed, they get differentiated and form parenchyma. That means they're out of the cycle, they're going to perform their specific function. Now, if the parenchyma cells have to divide again, that means they will have to come back into the cycle. So if these parenchyma cells, they come back into the cycle, if they come back, then that process will be termed as D. differentiation. So coming out of the cycle was differentiation. They become mature. So this black star which we have drawn is for differentiation and this red arrow or this red one is for the differentiation. This one. So again when the daughter cells are formed they are going to come out of the cycle into G0 or G0 phase which is considered as inactive for division. We call this process differentiation. They mature, they perform specific function. If required, like what happens in case of parenchyma cells, these differentiated parenchyma cells, they come back into the cycle and divide again. We call that reverse process as de-differentiation. Now, when these, this quark cambium, it produces quark on the outer side, and secondary cortex on the inner side, it again produces certain parenchyma cells. That means, again the cells are going to form and they will again come out of the cycle. That will be called redifferentiation. So if, uh, I'm going to number this, this is going to be the first thing, that is differentiation. The second one is going to be de-differentiation. And third, suppose after this, the parenchyma or the new cells which are formed, they again go out of the cycle. Then that process will be termed as re-differentiation. Okay, let's quickly uh, recap this. Normally, a cell is going to divide interphase and M phase. If the cell has divided whatever number of times it was to divide according to its genetic information. Suppose these two daughter cells, they don't have to divide anymore. So what are they going to do? They will grow to the normal size and become specialized for a particular function. That means they enter G1, come to their normal size and come out of the cell cycle. We call that process as differentiation. That means for that period, they're going to remain in an inactive state. Inactive for division. We call this process as differentiation and the stage is known as G0 or G0 stage. If for some reason the cell has to again divide, then it will come back into the cycle. We call that process as de-differentiation. Again, after dividing for some time, if it again gets specialized, that means comes out of the cycle, then that becomes redifferentiation. So this arrow is three. So this is number one step, differentiation. Dedifferentiation is number two step. And redifferentiation is number three step. This is how the cell is going to move in the cycle or if it has to come out of the cycle. This is one important thing. 
The second thing that we have to talk is of C value. So C value is actually the DNA content which is present in a particular cell. Here the chromosome number is 2N. We have started, we started with a diploid cell. Now how this uh, DNA content and chromosome number changes that we will see in the next part because now it is like all full. So in the next part we will talk about C value.